Hey what's up guys and welcome to the Head Start Lab series Volume 5 on Music Production. Now this is a free tutorial brought to you by the Recording Connection Audio Program, the only program that gets you inside a real studio where you learn from industry professionals on their equipment. In this video series we're going to show you everything that you need to know about music production. And all these videos were made from real tutoring sessions at the Recording Connection. So in addition to learning in a real professional studio, all of our students receive free unlimited tutoring sessions while in the program. Let's go ahead and begin. Hey, what's up guys? Eddie Martinez here with Recording Radio and Film Connection and welcome back to creating a song in Logic Pro X. In this video, we're going to go ahead and uh, focus in on some fundamentals on EQing. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the very first things that you should realize when EQing a song is that not every single track actually uh, needs EQing or at least if you recorded them correctly, not every single track is gonna need EQing. The reason being is that when you are recording your song, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the exact sound that you want in your recording every single time uh, so that there's actually less EQing and basically your, your sound sounds more, I guess, uh, authentic. Uh, when you start adding a whole bunch of EQing, it becomes very noticeable, maybe it becomes too bright, and then you're working with an entire mess. <laughs> uh, but what you're going to want to do is, for things that you think sound good, you just want to go ahead and enhance on them. Uh, EQing is the right thing to do. Uh, so one of the very common things that a lot of people like to EQ are kick drums. So we're going to go ahead and uh, focus in on EQing a kick drum. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to isolate it. Uh, so that you can basically hear how uh, your EQ is going to sound like when you turn on the bypass and when you turn it on and off so that you can basically hear the differences in uh, your, your sculpting. And that's basically what EQ is doing. Uh, you're basically sculpting a sound. Uh, a lot of people like to think about EQing when uh, they're EQing something, they're adding a lot of like uh, more bass to something that has you know not enough bass or something like that. That's actually in some ways kind of like the wrong way to do things. Uh, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is subtract on things. Uh, let's say if you want to make it more bassy, you're going to want to sub subtract some of the high end so that it sounds more bassy. Maybe there's too much high end drowning out whatever actual bass is already there. Uh, and that's the basic concept of uh, a, a lot of EQing. So let's go ahead and pick a nice EQ. And we're going to go with the channel EQ. And also, what's really cool about Logic Pro, Logic Pro X, and pretty much all the versions of Logic Pro, uh, you can basically start out with um, a preset. And a preset will basically give you the general idea of what you're going for, and you can go ahead and begin sculpting from there. Uh, so you're going to be able to like EQ or actually audition a few different um, kick EQs or whatever uh, particular track you're working on. Let's go ahead and select this modern kick. Cool. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have a little loop going so that we can uh, basically work on a section. So I have one right here. If you don't already uh, have that, I guess uh, go ahead and just uh, create a small loop. Cool. And we'll hit play. And first we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to make sure that we hear it without any EQ. All right, so that's what it sounds like uh, without an EQ. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So you got a lot more low end actually added, which is kind of cool, but uh, might not be the, the feel that you're going for, especially you got to think ahead a little bit uh, when you're EQing because whoever you're sending this uh, to afterwards for mastering or something like that, or maybe you got another guy who's going to uh, help you uh, mix this down. Uh, you you want to make things kind of subtle and you know pretty simple with a, a huge uh, increase of a uh, low end like this uh, to a kick that's already you know has some low end. You might want want to check out a different EQ, uh, something that's a little bit more subtle. So let's go ahead and check out what else that uh, what else is available. All right, cool. Um, let's go ahead and check this one out. This basically took out all that, that low end that was boosted. Let's see how it sounds. All right, so it sounds pretty cool. I think from here, we're gonna wanna uh, begin shaping our sound a little bit. So we're 
I, I'm pretty comfortable with the, the way this punchy kick sounds like this EQ right here. So we're going to start fiddling around with it and get a sound that we like. You know what, I actually kind of like it right there. Um, I didn't want to add any more high into that. And I, I kind of thought that me, maybe moving it a little bit to around like 400 hertz is exactly where I want it. Um, so I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let's go ahead and do an A and B. And what I what I know that what I've done right here is I've taken away some of the, uh, the kicks, I guess uh, the skin sound. Some of that skin sound's gonna be completely gone. So let's go ahead and hit play without it and we'll hear how originally sounds like. And we'll go ahead and turn it on right now. We'll turn it off. You know what it really sounds like is uh, it sounds like um, maybe at first the drum, uh, the kick drum, the the skin on that kick drum was a little loose and a little flimsy, and when we when we went ahead and made this minor adjustment, uh, it sounds like the the skin on the kick drum is a lot tighter. So I actually like the way that sounds. Uh, it pretty much delivers a, a more punchier kick. So uh, let's go ahead and hear it one more time. Okay, then finally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hear it in context to um, everything else. So you could do, you know, if you're working with a kick drum, you can go ahead and just uh, do it in contrast to the rest of the kit. Uh, and if you're feeling extra brave, you can go ahead and just do it with the entire track. But I prefer doing it with just the kick just to make sure that everything balances out correctly. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds like. And I think it kind of, uh, you know, jives pretty well, uh, for lack of a better term. I could tell that this is a little loud there, so let me go ahead and turn this one down a little bit. Let me turn this one down a little bit more. Yeah, and that, that, that kick is really coming in nice and clear, and it sounds punchy, sounds great. So we'll go ahead and move on to a different instrument. And you could really do that with every, if you want to get into the nitty gritty, you can pretty much do that with every single instrument. And if you want more high end on something, you, you'll you basically cut out the low end uh, on whatever particular instrument. But we're gonna go ahead and move on to a completely different instrument. So you got a feel for that. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and check out, um, you know, actually just, out of randomness, let's go ahead and uh, check out this uh, Plux Cycles thing right here. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and unsolo that, and we'll solo this track right here. Cool. And it looks like we have it already comes with an EQ, uh, but let's go ahead and hear how it sounds like. Maybe we're gonna want to adjust that a little bit. Go ahead and go back a little bit. We'll move this playhead to the beginning of bar 49. Let's make sure we got the. All right. Cool. Let's go ahead and listen in. Okay, so if something already has um, an EQ on it and you kind of like the way it sounds, but you still want to fiddle around with it, the best thing to do is to make sure that you copy that instrument or that instrument, that uh, particular uh, preset, uh, because you might want to revert back to it. And all you would do is, since you already copied it, you'll just be, go ahead and paste it right there in the same area, and then, you know, there you go. It'll restore back. So let's go ahead and move our 
play heads to the beginning of this. And we'll start fiddling around with the low end. Maybe you want to have it sound a little bit more bright. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, uh, what's also great about Logic Pro X is that it also gives you this compare button, which will allow you to uh, hear whatever previously, whatever um, changes that weren't made beforehand, I guess it's original settings. Uh, you can go ahead and hear that and then compare them to the changes that you made. And you know what, I actually really like the way this sounds. So I'm not gonna really mess with that already because when I, at first I liked the way um, the high end sounded when I made the changes. But then when I heard the low end, I felt like it was, I guess, um, it sounded a less full. So I wanna go ahead and keep that low end there. It, I think it sounds great. So let's go ahead and leave that one as is. We'll go to this mellow poly and see what it's all about. So we're done with this one. All right, so it sounds pretty cool. Um, there's not very much uh, low end, but uh, this is kind of like a lead type of instrument anyways. It's kind of plucky, so you, you're not gonna want to have too much low in it. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we could do uh, by playing around with some of these EQ tools, uh, such as uh, any of the bright brightening sound stuff that we can do. So maybe this very first one. Let's go ahead and do a comparison. Okay, uh, so you know what I did? I actually added a little bit more, uh, you know, brightness, a little more high end to the sound, which I kind of like. Uh, one thing you got to keep in mind though, when you are EQing, is that your, whatever mixes that you did prior are going to begin to change. Uh, things will either get louder or quieter, depending on how you're sculpting your sound. Uh, so just go ahead and uh, be mindful of that, and also keep in mind that also that there's a master gain uh, button right here, so you can go ahead and like, you know, lower that down a little bit. I actually prefer to um, pay attention to the meters, and especially this one right here, so that you can uh, note any significant volume changes or dynamic changes. Let's go ahead and bring this back to where it was, and we'll take another listen. Okay, so um, this sounds pretty nice. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna reduce this just uh, ever so slightly, uh, actually at the low end, so it sounds a little bit more brighter, okay?
So I kind of like that a, a little bit more. You can really hear the brightness of the sound. So instead of you know raising up any more uh, high end, I took out some low end so I can make this high end sound a little bit more defined. Okay, cool. So these are some of the basic ideas and fundamentals that you guys should be following when you guys are mixing uh, in Logic Pro or any, any other program. This, these are basically the fundamentals. In our next video, we're going to go ahead and do another quick mix. And then on the final video, we're going to go ahead and export this uh, stuff. Uh, maybe we'll do one more quick video on uh, just checking out some mastering presets. And yeah. Uh, from there, you guys can go ahead and download this so you guys can mix this however you like or add to it however you guys like. So I hope the video was helpful. And of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe for plenty more videos just like this. I'm Eddie Martinez, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finances a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And of course, I'll catch you guys on the next video.